Hi. I'm back here a lot later on a Sunday than I usually am. I went to a three-day uh, songwriter festival and stayed up really late last night and couldn't, wrote this, but just couldn't find the way to get out in front of the camera and talk until I found out that maybe doing it at sunset tonight would be even more beautiful. So this is Whitefish Lake. I'm out at the Whitefish Lake Lodge sitting on the rocks and talking about this fall and the solar flares knowing that we're sort of changing and we're going into something else. So let's preface this bit by saying that like over the last two weeks, wow, it's been sort of intense, foggy, um, heavy. Uh, we're, I heard saw some words cleansing, sort of painful emotions coming up, things that were that were sort of tapping us on the shoulder. And the the flares amped up again this week. So for those of you who've been following me with solar flares, we were having two or three a day and they were in the M class. A um, couple times this what last week, I follow Pam Youngins on, um, on uh, Facebook and she always uses spaceweather.com to sort of um, tell you what date and time and the, in, the intensity of them. And then she passes them along as well as an ast astrological sort of overview in a lot of different things. So I just think her information is fascinating. Um, we also had two surprising CMEs, which are um, coronal mass ejections coming out of the sun that, that came and swiped past the earth and, and, and brought some real geomagnetic sort of intensity into us. Um, and we have another one coming on the 19th of this week. So just know that there's like all of this solar flare stuff hitting us and there's I've had people calling me they've cried um, I've helped two or three people with intense back pain this week hips I've had my own story which I'll share with you in a minute so the symptoms that, of what we can expect when something like this is happening right now this fall right is that our emotions are overloaded we seem to be having an emotional response to a lot of things that are coming up we feel overwhelmed there can be an energetic constriction or contraction and some of our deep stories and old memories and um, uh, patterns, familial patterns, lineal ancestral patterns are coming up. And so I'll share with you that um, this summer I took a job, a seasonal job to work with a lot of 20 to 30 year olds. And about July, uh, right between the two toes next to my big toe, right down this center sort of spot was this oh such a nerve ending soreness right uh and so i kind of hobbled around for most of the summer and wasn't sure if i'd cracked my foot or bruised it on a pebble rock or something and it had gone away when i went camping for 17 days and hiked and played um, out in East Glacier and then as I sort of came back into Whitefish back into sort of sort of the structure and in life it came right back up again right <laughs> I'm like hmm something's going on here that I need to pay attention to so I went to a woman velvet that I've known for 13 years she's a healer she's a wise woman um, and we did she has reflexology and she does Akashic Records and we went in to go look at that and man what came up didn't surprise me at all and sort of floored me which was what happens when I armor up when I feel threatened um, by uh, male female work environment money anything it's like I just put this armor on and it's like and it just snaps down and what it does is I drop my shoulders down I pull my hips up and it's sort of like I protect the torso of my body and then I almost lean to the left to protect the left side, which is the feminine, right? And when I do this, um, there's very specific reasons for it and what we were able to identify. And I shared with this a couple of times with you over the summer, which was what happens when I'm around mean girls or people that judge me for being different than they are or feel too seen and take it personally and start to sort of hammer on me. And I, oh boy, was that armor up for most of the summer, right? So so what also happens is that the adrenals get stretched up. So the, the connection between the pituitary and the adrenals is, is, is um, 
um, hampered. It's probably the best word to put it. My hips are twisted, my body's in flux, and this stomach meridian that comes down through your head, around your eyes, down your nose, down your throat, down through the heart, through the solar plexus, through the sacral, and then down each leg, goes right out that spot between these two toes and to release. And so uh, about three days ago, I started working on that and releasing, dropping the armor, opening the heart, being vulnerable, dropping the adrenals down into the kidneys and relaxing and just riding this out. And so while I'm working on all of this is when these M class flares are hitting and I'm thinking, at least I have a tool that's helping me sort of go with the flow of it, right? So it, it, my armoring was triggered by current events, but what we also noticed was that this is ancestral. This is something that's been in my lineage for years, especially with women, which is protect yourself because it isn't always safe. So isolating the heart, shutting the emotions down was something that I brought um, in the tools to address within the family lineage. So that's been my work for the last three or four years. And of course it's up right now during these flares. So as we're going into the fall, as the summer of just pummeling us over and over and over again with, with these solar flares, it's kind of like, man, how much more can I take, right? So it's triggering me. And at the same time, I'm working on my tools. So healing it, being more fluid and easier um, on my body, easier to walk, easier to breathe, easier to be more vulnerable, right? And what I loved was the timing of this three-day Whitefish Songwriter Festival because it's, a, it's, a, um, it's an event that has over 30 um, singer-songwriters, songwriters who write the songs play them play the guitar play the the instrument that goes with the songs and then also sing them and sing them well and so what i was looking at is creatives you know uh, just flowing and 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 blossoming um being vulnerable telling us their story uh, saying i don't know how to do these chords i'm still practicing on them um uh, using their voice and their vibration and that seemed to alleviate a lot of the symptoms as well as just recognizing that the more vulnerable I am, the more I drop my armor, the, the more that the music could get in. So I'm practicing all of this and, and opening up and feeling into the lyrics, right? Feeling into the voice, feeling into the vibration. And it helped me ride through these last two big M class flares. So think about this summer. I mean, we know that it started last fall, but then, you know, it sort of went through the spring and then this summer was a lot of light, a lot of flares. Um, hitting us, pounding us, light codes, expansion, DNA upgrades, pulverizing us to dig down deep in to find those dark hidden shadows that are from our lineage that we are here to work with, right? So, and they're starting to surface and now we're like <laughs> crying in the middle of the grocery store, having enormous shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, in my case, hip pain, foot pain, right? And then let's just pair that with this last piece, which I want to bring in, which is kind of fun. On Saturday, the 23rd is the fall equinox, right? And the Latin word for equinox is, um, oh wow, equal night. So it means that we are exactly at the 50-50 mark between um, light in the day for 12 hours and darkness for 12 hours, which is, you know, the internal and the external. It's the masculine and the feminine. It's the equal balanced Libra energy, right? Of the scales, which is how we are holding. And so Equinox marks us where we're, where we're doing enough of the internal work to be able to, um, to bring that darkness up and hold it in balance. And I love using that example of a way that we can approach these flares, approach this ancestral work that we're doing um, look at the symptoms and find out what we need to do. So I have six tips for you today and I'm loving this sunset in the background in those clouds. Wow. Okay, number one, um, plan on paying attention between now and Saturday. Saturday, I think it's at 12, 12, 50, 12 something a.m. on Saturday morning is when we hit that exact marker, right? 
think it's 1250. So what we want to do is we want to be present. We want to be attentive. We want to be awake. We want to notice what we're feeling between now and Saturday. Notice the colors of nature. Notice the temperature, the light in the sky, the way darkness and light plays off of each other all the time. So here you have these white bursts of clouds in the background. You've got the white sparkles on the water. You've got the white shirt, the dark shirt, and all of these dark light, dark light, dark light messages coming in. So just sort of play with those and pay attention and see what happens, right? Number two, filter all of this information through the heart. You can observe it through the eyes. You can gather it through the eyes and through the mind, but then filter it down through the heart so that it comes out through vibration. So it comes into your field, which is I'm starting to notice that things are shifting and they're shifting and, and, I'm, and I'm feeling this in my heart first and foremost and the ducks are flying across now. It's so cool. Uh, number three, uh, allow yourself to have some of those quiet moments to prepare your energy for the shift from full light as we're going into whew, full light of the sun, of summer, of basking in expansion and everything. Look, at, here comes the ducks now. That's so cute. Um, you know, let, let that sun, and then we're going into shortening day, shorter days where it's going to start getting darker. And, and we're gonna start going more internal, more internal, more internal, as it's starting to get darker and darker over here, right? So, so give yourself some quiet moments to do this. Whether it's just go sit on the back porch for a minute, go walk down to a place like this and just sit and watch a sunset and let, let yourself notice it's gonna get darker. It's gonna get darker fast between now and December, right? Okay, number four, our Northern Hemisphere fear is like now into harvesting, collecting all the last fruits, apples, pressing apples, raking, you know, like getting everything shut down because between now and, and October, um, we have the end of summer, the, the tidying up, the trimming back of the tree, of the leaves and the bushes, noticing that all the leaves are falling. And so let nature show you how the leaves just drop and everything just releases in the fall and, and releases for us to go inward and internal, right? So bring the activities of the days to a close. Celebrate each day and go like, oh, so I can do a little bit of this today and then I'm gonna bring it to a close. So try just sort of pacing yourself between now and um, from the equinox into October of like, what else can I do without that frenzy? Oh no, what if I'm not ready? And just go, today I'm getting ready for darkness. I'm getting ready for the cold weather. I'm getting ready for the internal work, okay? Number five, make room for the internal work within you. Give yourself space to rest, slow down, get into a different kind of activity than what you were doing. You know, this is where we wait for snow. This is where we sort of batten down the hatches and we're ready for early snow, especially up here in Montana, the colder weather. And, and we're going into the action of dormancy. It's an action. It's actually something you prepare for. I'm going to go dormant for the winter. I'm going to be a lot less active. I'm going to be much more internally creative and unaware. I'm going to integrate and balance. And so really look at it be, during this Libra period of time between nine, what, uh, the 22nd of September to the 22nd of, of October, right? Um, where we do more of the light and dark balance. And then just know that when we get to 1221, we're in like the longest night of the year, right? Solstice. And number six, the final one, is to have compassion for letting go. Compassion for your outdoor play, for the trees, the colors, the, the life, the vibrancy that you've had all summer. Have compassion as you're bringing that in and you're letting go of that childlike play that we've had all summer and we're starting to go into quiet dormancy. So that's what I have for you this week. If there's something I can do to help you out with that, by all means, drop me a note, let me know. And um, if not, I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.